mold has become a huge problem throughout Nebraska and it's taken out several of our scotch pines throughout, throughout the entire state. We're going to be looking at a few of the symptoms associated with pine wilt today and how we're going to manage it in the long term, which is very important to prevent further spread of this disease. Today I'm standing by a scotch pine. It's showing some of the basic symptoms of pine wilt. We're going to see a gray cast to the tree. The needles are staying attached. But the one thing with pine wilt is it doesn't have a particular uh, distribution pattern associated with it. We can sometimes see it start at the bottom of the tree, in the crown of the tree, random branches. It all depends on where it's being introduced into the tree. Pine wilt nematode is actually transmitted by the pine sawyer beetle, which is an insect that emerges in Nebraska from May to October. And the nematodes actually just catch a riot on the beetles. And when the beetles come and feed on the tree, the nematodes are then able to be extracted out into the tree and they are able to infect. The nematodes are able to, able to reproduce very rapidly in the tree and that causes the sudden death of the tree. On campus a few years ago, we saw a tree go down in about a month and this is very common to see a very healthy tree in June and all of a sudden it's dead by the end of July. The one thing that pine wilt does is it basically plugs up the entire vascular system of the tree and the wood becomes very dry. And when we're looking at sampling for pine wilt, that's important. If the woods are very dry, almost like firewood that's been sitting out for at least a year, it's a good possibility we have pine wilt nematode. Now, if we have pine wilt nematode, what can we do to manage it? And the sad part is there isn't anything we can do. Once the tree is infected, it's infected. And our recommendation is that the tree is immediately cut and it's chipped, burned, or buried. And the reason why we recommend these three steps is due to the fact that the beetles can emerge throughout the season from firewood if we keep it as firewood. So we want to be able to cut that wood down into small chunks so the beetles aren't able to emerge and we're not getting any further spread of the disease. It's also just good neighborly politeness to be able to cut those trees down. So we've talked about management of pine wilt. The next step is to actually confirm whether you have pine wilt in your landscape and whether you need to remove that tree. And it's a very simple task to be able to sample for pine wilt. We're just going to go to our tree that's been affected and we're going to look at a branch that's turned practically all brown, the needles are all brown, and we're going to cut a section of wood and the recommendation is to go with a section of wood that's at least the diameter of your wrist. This assures that I get enough sample to be able to extract the nematode and then approximately six to eight inches in length or longer, whatever, whatever works the best for you. You mail the sample into the clinic or drop it off and you bring the sample into the clinic and all I'm going to do is extract some of the wood because the pine wilt nematode is actually living in the in the vascular system of the tree so we just put it into a clamp and just chisel away chunks of wood. With those chunks of wood then we're able to able to collect them we put them into a beaker such as this add a little water and then we're going to bubble it for a couple hours and this is going to force the nematodes to come out and then we're able to run them over a sieve and be able to actually see the nematodes and take them to the microscope. Pine wilt has some very key uh, diagnostic characteristics associated with it. The males have a very crooked tail and they have a rose thorn, what we call spicule, on them which is a real key characteristic for them. And when we see those underneath the scope, we know for sure we have pine wilt nematode and not another nematode that may naturally be living in the wood. And so that is the positive confirmation and from that information you can then go out to your landscape and remove the trees that are affected to prevent further spread or if it comes back negative you have another issue going on in your landscape such as a tip light or an environmental stress that will need further investigation.